Do I have mic? Can I speak with the... Is it? Check. Check, check, check. Good. Okay, I can't, I can't hear myself at all or not. We have engineering things that need to go the other direction. Josh is allegedly the conduit for that. That's right. Hi there, everybody. Uh, my name is Remy DeCosmaker, and I'm the Fedora Community Action and Impact Lead. So uh, mostly what I do in council land is the stuff that is not engineering, generally speaking. So ambassadors, budget, budget, budget ambassadors, uh, education as well. I'm also the Fedora Council's education objective lead. So figuring out how to do more stuff on universities and campuses around the world, not just in the U.S., and uh, I serve on the Red Hat OSAS team, so I help to liaise between Red Hat upstream, Fedora community, so when things are broken or not happy or whatever, um, these guys are all doing the good work and the productive things, and I'm here to help take community input and provide it back up to Red Hat land. So come talk to me. So welcome everybody, uh, my name is Jan Kuřík and I'm program manager for Fedora, so I'm responsible for scheduling. I also have the role of change wrangler and uh, I'm also running elections, so I guess that's like these three main areas I'm responsible for. So if you have any anything please send me an email, because if you ask me here, I will probably forget it once I leave this room. So you can ask whatever you want, but if you want something, just send me an email and I will probably, uh, or hopefully I will not forget it. I, I changed the slides to the train here because John is basically like the train uh, conductor for, for sure. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm Dennis Goma. I'm one of the release engineers, and don't send me email because I get too much. So if you want to get a hold of me, ping me on IRC. It's much, much better. And I, you know, I mean, my job is to try and make sure that we get the bits out the door and can do it better and faster and more. Uh, my name is Adam Miller. I uh, work on the floor engineering team. I also recently joined Fesco. Uh, I'm also uh, kind of, I do what Dennis n needs done, doesn't feel like doing, uh, <laughs> to the best of my ability. I try to float around also, I do uh, Docker um, atomic things in Fedora space, uh, well I, I work on them, I don't do them, I will not even remotely attempt to take that much credit. I also participate in the Fedora Cloud SIG. I'm uh, Langdon White, uh, uh, originally I was on the council with no responsibility. And then I, which I enjoyed, um, but then uh, I foolishly got led into taking over Fedora modularization. Um, so I'm my role is tricking people into doing that. Right. So I'm right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now it's your turn. We got nothing else to say. Wait. No. I, I, I oh, other things to say. <laughs> first of all, first of all, a Adam snuck in here. Yeah. He's the community monkey, I think, is uh, for Q &A. Q &A. Am, I, am I in this now? Are I just came. Yeah, we're like we're pulling. Like you're, we're oh, yeah, right. God. You can you can stay sitting if you want, or you can come up on the stage. Okay, I'm. Uh, oh man. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we we reserved a Q and A ghetto for you. Over there. Gee, thanks. Okay, I'll go and stand in the corner. Um, I'm. Adam Williamson, I'm the Fedora QA community monkey officially. I'm like the QA guy, I guess. People call me the QA guy. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, also, we have on the Fedora Council, but not here, we have listed up here uh, Christoph Wickert, uh, who has been appointed by FAMSCO to sort of represent the ambassadors and community side of things. Um, then Roby Duck, who's one of our elected representatives as well, and he is also from the websites team, is the lead of the websites team, and he is generally awesome. And then Maria, uh, who we a lot of us know as Tatika, is uh, going to be our new diversity advisor, and that's just starting up as well. Uh, okay, so that's, that's the introductions. Now it's the questions time. Hey, Brendan, do you have a question? Wait, where's the mic runner? You're Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, That's I almost me. appointed That's you, but look, you got one. Yeah, right. Okay. Okay. Does it work? It does work. Okay. First, thank you for like living and breathing Fedora. It's what I use every day, and it makes me happy. So, two questions. 
<laughs> so RCM question about secondary architectures. Uh, first, I've heard two slightly different stories about the secondary arch. In moving to the new Koji, will build failures initially block the success of an overall build? Or is the notion still that the secondary arches, if they fail, the build succeeds? So if we get to a world where we are building all of the RPMs, uh, so in the RPM case, building, um, you know, like we, it, ha it has to succeed across all the architectures, and if it fails on one, it will fail the RPM build. In the case of composing the distribution and putting together Fedora, if for some reason the you know the cloud images fail or you know building of Anaconda fails because or bu building the install environment and you know we don't get install media if that fails on a secondary architecture that will not fail the compose because it is a non-blocking deliverable and it will not block stuff going out but in the rpm build sense it will we're looking at putting in ways to make it's sure no we're we're looking at putting in ways so that if um you know, if, if it fails, particularly leaf node stuff, if you just add an exclude, if you add an exclude arch, the second the secondary arch teams will get an automatic notification that someone's committed something that has excluded an arch, and you can do that and move on. The core stuff generally just works, and it's we don't perceive that it, there's much risk of holding up anything in the distribution because of that. Does that sound less horrible, Does Kevin? So, so hang on, hang on, hang on. Slow down, slow down, hang on. Wait, ARM, <laughs> yes. ARM is definitely the slowest, uh, but we got some new build hardware, right? And so they should speed up. I'll, I'll, I'll repeat the comment while it's running. The comment was that it'll be one would be really slower, much slower to build everything if we block on all the art. So we have new ARCH 64 build hardware. There's 30 nodes. Um, the testing I've done on it at, when running an ARM v7 VM on it, it takes, say, for example, a good two hours off the current um, ARM v7 kernel build. And in some cases, um, possibly even faster than the current x8664 hardware. In the case of, say, the Power, so Power 64, Big Endian, Little Endian, the hardware is actually significantly faster than x8664 hardware that we currently have. Um, so in the vast majority of cases moving forward, um, the hardware will be at least as fast as the x8664 stuff, so you shouldn't see any speed regressions. And as soon as I get network to the hardware um, and we can start to put it into production, um, the builds will go up significantly faster. So the ARM v7 hardware we have at the moment is about 1.3 gigahertz, 4 gig of RAM. Um, the VMs that we're running are like eight cores, 12 gig of RAM or something like that with SSDs and various other bits and pieces. So um, they are fast and a lot faster than the current generation of ARM v7 hardware. Stage, we're just going to be awkward and do this yeah, a lot. Yeah, that's awesome. I'll just run around. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Switching, switching from also hardware to security. <laughs> so we have um, Fedora packagers get the uh, certificates generated every half a year. Currently, they are generated on the server. What is the plan to basically switch the uh, being generated at the client side 
where actually the private key should be, not at the server. I don't think there is any such plan at the time to do this, but if you want to help contribute to doing that, that sounds all right. I missed part of the question. So the, 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 question, the question, Dennis, was right now when we, re we regenerate our certs every six months, mm -hmm. he asked when we're going to start generating the certificates on the client, right. so the private key's okay. there. So we do, we, uh, the CA certificate that is used to create the user certificates, when I created it, I'm like, oh, 10 years will give us plenty of time. So it actually expires in two years. We have to do something either renew the CA or something else. What I'd really, really like to do, but need to have the cycles to do it, is put dog tag in um, infrastructure and then have the user would create the key on the private key on their machine and we could then use CertMonger to automatically renew the certificate and we could set this, uh, the certificates to expire like every two weeks or four weeks. They'll get automatically renewed in the background and that way if somebody you know, steps away, there's, it reduces the risk that you know, someone could use their, get a hold of their key and you know, use their um, machine to you know, build things. And so you know, from, a, from a general, perspective, I think it would be better a role, but you know, we need to have time and resources and whatnot to do that, and we have yeah, two years. So yeah. what, what, is or the, wait, what is the plan to make that susceptible for other people to help do yeah. it? I heard somebody whisper, uh, mention Kerberos in the audience. Are you, uh, was that you volunteering to do it? Because wouldn't that be awesome? I, I, I volunteered many times. Okay. I'm an upstream Kerberos developer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, perhaps we, yeah. we need to talk because I've never heard of volunteers. Okay. So. Right. So that is um, and right. <laughs> right. Just yeah. Do yep. And I think uh, we've we've had historically some communication problems about how to get those kind of things into stuff that's happening. Mm -hmm. And in the last year or so, if you went to Tennis's talk, which I skipped. Um, uh, we, we've got a much better, I know, right? Uh, we've got a much better process for um, making sure that those things don't right. get dropped on the floor when they come in. So, yeah. um, and yeah. just, just so you know, upstream, we've been putting in a lot of work on the Kerberos story, and I would really like to see Fedora be an example of what these best practices look like. The, you know, I mean, there has been some talk <laughs> in moving Fez to be based on free IPA and to enable Kerberos as well as. SSL certificate authentication for Koji and different pieces of infrastructure, but it takes people, you know, doing the work and, you know, we're, we're getting better at enabling people to do stuff, but well, we're still not perfect. Too, right? like in, the fa in the case of FAST, like we have a, we have, we have uh, the FAST has basically been re rewritten recently, so I mean that's, that was a discussion that went on for a while. I don't want to rehash the whole thing here, but I think eventually it's one of those things that, you know, maybe we want to move away from from NIHing it and and doing something different. And I don't know what that thing might be. Hopefully, you know, something like IPA would work. You know, maybe there are other things out there. I I don't know the answer to it because I'm not the technical dude who would suss that out. Um, but I'm certainly interested in finding things that would reduce uh, cases where the Fedora engineering team ends up being like their own upstream because that just means more work for a small number of people. And as awesome as they are, they're, they don't have an infinite amount of time, so. Yeah, my, my interest is not trying to push a particular technology. I want to see all of our groups succeed and as little effort that you guys can put into writing custom software to do stuff that we can provide you off the shelf, I, I think is a real thing. Yeah. And so I'm yeah. really just trying to be helpful. No, agreed. So agreed. to Mike, Make that up. The question or the comment is: uh, We want to avoid writing custom software, and they want us to avoid writing custom software. And it would be awesome if we all work together. And we'll be done in two years. <laughs> <laughs> Problem solved. Let's go home. There's a question in the back. Sorry, it's all the way up there. <laughs> <laughs> Next, someone down here, then someone up there. <laughs> By the way, this, this guy down here that snuck in late, he's Paul Freeld. He's the Fedora engineering manager. He's also my boss, which is another reason why I'm standing up here. Um, so in case you didn't know.
former FPL, yay Paul. And I just crashed and just completely cut my stuff. I'm like, hey, I'm going to stand on that seat. He came in late and didn't want to be awkward and sit down. So he was right. like, yeah. Right. Paul's also on the Fedora Workstation working group. Uh, All right, Jen. So, yeah. Hi, oh, yeah. guys. So I actually wanted to ask a question to make this poor guy run up the stairs. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I have two questions. So there's nine of you on stage. Are you the nine power users that my, uh, Matt referred to this morning? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Den De Dennis is one of them, and Adam is one of them. I run G-edit. I'm a power yeah. editor. <laughs> Okay, so now, do you know who they are, Matt? Yes, I'm not going to name all the names, though. Okay, all right. I was just curious. Um, my, but, my question um, actually is, is, and I know you guys like to dump, uh, drive right into the technical details and have these technical conversations, um, but I would really love to know how somebody who has no coding skills whatsoever can get involved in Fedora, and it would be really great if you could talk more about that. Oh, me, me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a technical solution. <laughs> so that's a great question. And there are a couple different places where people can get involved. So there's a new team within Fedora that we've started this year called Community Operations, which is sort of a generalist group of people that are ninjas that are supposed to go between the different sub-projects. And within that team, there's an onboarding process so that you can get acquainted with each part of Fedora. So we have an onboarding series of badges, which are part of Fedora badges, so that there's easy on-ramps to sort of get introduced to the project and do tasks like write blog posts, interview team members, help with the release schedule tasks that sort of don't fall into one particular place, like helping Jan with elections and helping to craft the release announcements and a lot of non-technical but very vital community infrastructure. Once folks can start on-ramping therein with also Fedora Join and What Can I Do for Fedora.org, which are great sort of sorting hats to help people figure out where they want to get in, then they can get introduced to different parts of the project and figure out who the upstream mentors are within Fedora and then get plugged into those teams. So we're working on that a lot, and with the diversity and inclusion advisor, Tatika, I think we're going to do a much better job of engaging with other international communities as well and other underrepresented communities. You know, there's a lot of, it's not just about culture, it's about atypical contributors. So having non-technical ways to contribute to the project is huge and Outreachy is a, a program that helps us with that as well where we can get interns who are not necessarily technical to work on this kind of stuff. So this is a conversation I'm very excited about. Um, I would love to talk more about it, and there are lots of other places, too, to help, and I saw other people who wanted to answer, so I'm going to pass the mic. And that, that's Ralph Bean right there. Yeah, this is awesome. It's fantastic. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So I just want to say QA, we obviously have a lot of stuff for non-technical people to do. We have entries in What Can I Do for Fedora, and we have a wiki joining page, which is not the best thing ever. We would love help with cleaning it up, but it is there, and it gives you a list of various things you can do that are not technical and helps you do them. Who's next? Anyone else? How about a non-technical version? Go for it. All right, dumbest guy on the stage gets the mic. That's awesome. Um, so, yeah, so my, my entry into Fedora was non-technical, and you could argue I'm a little more technical now, like I actually wrote some code in the last few years, but it's terrible, so I think that counts in my favor as being non-technical. I do. No, well, but I yeah, run. but I, I trained for that after I came to Red Hat, like, it was a, it was, like I was almost forced to, so. Anyway, but um, uh, there's, you know, Documentation group is out there. That's how I got started um, writing docs. Um, I have very, very strong, strong love for docs. I know Stephen's grinning up and gr Stephen Gilson's a content strategist at Red Hat, and he is awesome. And uh, um, and one of the things that I feel very passionately about is making sure that people can contribute in places like that um, without having to learn a whole bunch of tools. And and right now the docs group is kind of re-energizing and sort of thinking about how that works. I do not want to speak for the docs leadership, um, which includes Pete Travis. I don't think he's here. He's an awesome dude. And I think he also feels that the tools and things they're using are have become way out of step with what the rest of the world prefers to use. And there are so much better things available nowadays. So for example, having somebody who ha does has no affiliation with Fedora um, able to actually drop in 
edit a document live and have that change actually come to the docs team as what you know a pull, what we call you know a pull request in the the coding world right and somebody in the back end is going to see that and look at it and take it in or not right and when you know when people get a little taste of being able to do that and they get a thank you back or you know if they sign into fedora later they get a badge all of those things can be used to sort of keep the project sticky but it's all about um, making possibilities for for people to do things in the long tail, because as Matthew showed, you know we 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 actually have you know ten like like you said I think ten percent of the ten percent or was it ten percent of the population was doing a third of the work I can't get I keep I keep forgetting what it <laughs> yeah. was ten ten percent are doing two thirds of the work that's that's not terrible but it's not great but the good thing about it is is that it means there's a very long tail of ninety percent that are doing the other third of the work and that is a lot of work. So if we can make more ways for that tail to get bigger and like more of the mass to be in the tail, like the brontosaurus to have a bigger tail, mm -hmm. that would be awesome. Although I know we don't like brontosauruses, but they make really good no, they're visual really for that. They're okay again. The brontosaurus. Do they make good burgers? People, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. Well, so the only thing I would also add, right, it, 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 right now this minute, um, the best way you could help to contribute in a non-technical way to, is to actually work with Remy working yes. on the how do you contribute in non-technical ways. Yes. <laughs> the meta contribution. Exactly. Oh, and design. We forgot design. Oh, and design. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Design's so a big part. Artists, uh, Mo can't do all of the design, <laughs> is basically. Yeah. They've been kicking ass lately as well. It's yes, nice yeah. to see new people in design. Websites too. Yeah. Well, hello. <laughs> hello all. I, I'd like to add something from my from me. In fact, I, unfortunately, we have issues not only with non-technical people, but also with technical people who want to join Fedora. For example, who want to work on the infrastructure. Like, uh, I'd like to remind you what's going. What just went here when a guy who knows a little about Kerberos wants to participate, and all he, all, all he got in return is just, oh, you come come and do something. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like this in the open source world. Uh, uh, Matthew, I already told you about a year ago and probably previous year. Uh, it's, almost it's almost impossible to contribute to Fedora infrastructure because in order to contribute, one could uh, try to implement a part of infrastructure to want to contribute. And this is impossible because we don't have a configuration, we don't have as schematics, how everything built. Uh, that's why we don't see a lot of people uh, starting contributing on Fedora infrastructure. That's compared to, for example, other areas. Uh, yeah, that's that's cool, but I didn't finish yet. What we need is the um, the things. Uh, it is a plan how to contribute. Actually, you have to download this, and this is a let's say Koji. We have to know about that, and that, that's the body, body, our body. And uh, if you want to improve it, this is our repository, and this is how you can download, how it can you start it in its configuration, our virtual environments. We don't have it yet. Right. So before we start to, well, uh, the, you know, got yeah, got it. Mm -hmm. All right, so last, Tuesday, I guess it was, at Config Management Camp, which was in Ghent in Belgium. Uh, we gave a talk on open infrastructure in Fedora. So it may not be as widely known, but we have a wide open infrastructure. The Fedora Infrastructure Apprentices Program, all you have to do basically is sign up for a mailing list, introduce yourself, respond to an email once a month, and join the weekly meetings. We recently migrated in the last two years. All of our Ansible playbooks are absolutely public, so every part of our infrastructure is public and open. And if you join the oh, wait, if you join the meetings, we talk about all of the things on the agenda. And the Fedora infrastructure team is actually one of the most open parts. I mean, so that's like if you want to get involved in Fedora infra specifically, there's a slide deck. It talks about we just presented on this in Ghent. And I agree, like, we can absolutely do better with this stuff always. And we need to do a good job. Yes. 
Oh, but they put up the gear as well. We have huge chunks Who? of infrastructure yeah. in a forge that is like GitHub now. Yeah. Yeah. I've well, submitted just, pull I mean, requests it's to Pungy. The I've project is as much technical debt as any other 10 year old organization. It's like, you know. Yes, I do realize what you So, come to meetings. So, okay. Come to meetings. That's exactly what you told everybody who wants to participate for years. I don't do implement for scheduled. Come to meetings. I want to do this. Come to meetings. Hey, so all we can do all we can do though is promise we'll do, we'll try to do better. Well it's not it's not just promise to do better. We've got try. So we've got developers.fedoraproject.org, which is not infrastructure specific, but it is stuff for Fedora developers. Uh, we're working on hubs, which is not specific to your question, but it will show you exactly what's going on in the Fedora project, kind of in a live state. Right, so I agree, we have these problems where people that want to contribute to Fedora or Fedora infrastructure specifically don't even know where to start, right? That's kind of the problem. But, but, so we're, wait, I, uh, 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 this is like the one time I get my boss to be like, zip it. What's better? So uh, I think that over the years we have realized that this is hard to do and we're working on it. And there are small things that will eventually bring them together and now I'm going to let Paul talk, just because he pays me. Uh, I do not. Um, so one thing, the the one thing that I would like to say is we actually there are a whole list of tasks that are called issues in the Fedora infrastructure, right? We've got a track that's full of them, um, and those are things that people can work on. So if you are showing up not knowing what you can work on that would be a way to target what you were working on. And then you can work with one of the people in the infrastructure team to say specifically, here's the thing I feel like I can do. What do I need to do in order to be able to fix that thing? But I will also tell you, there is a barrier to get over and it's called trust, right? When you show up, we're not just gonna let you, sh you know, traipse around our infrastructure. Yeah, yeah. You're, what you're saying is you would like an environment that you could replicate parts of our infrastructure and do that kind of thing, right? Yep. So, so yeah, yeah. That's well. That, so you're, Remy's getting to the exact thing I was going to say. So, our we have an answer. Yeah, that's right. We they 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 don't even hand me the, the, like like supposedly I'm these guys' boss and they don't let me on these systems it's either. It's really so. easy to join the Fedora infrastructure apprentices and get basic access to things. It is. Okay. I did it. Paul did it. Yeah, yeah. We we need, but but I will say. Okay, go ahead. Remy gets the last word. So the last thing is that. We do give read-only access to all of the infrastructure when you join the apprentices group. So even if you don't have right access, we are absolutely trusting you when you join the infrastructure team to see exactly how everything works. There's, we're trying our best to lower the barrier to entry for trust. And this is something we need to talk. Now, task identification is something we can do better with, absolutely. We have easy fix is, bugs, that but that is everywhere. So we can talk more about this. We got to go on another question. I, I have to say one more thing. Oh, yeah. Then we really are going. Yeah, yeah. We really are. Uh, and, and, the, and the last thing was that um, I, I definitely hear what you're saying about being able to replicate infrastructure. And I think that is a worthy goal. So I am going to take that under advisement and see if that's something that we might be able to pursue somehow. Because I like the idea of being able to like shoot down like a at least a microcosm of what we do so that you can actually practice at home or try something and see how it works. I think it's a great idea. Next question. Yeah. Really done. Really done. Hi. Uh, Ubuntu, like 12 years ago, made Linux really simple. So, codex drivers, you can simply install them there. I know why it's hard in Fedora, but will we finally catch up there? Like, sooner or later? And when? How? Matthias, would you like to take this question? He would like me to take it. Uh, yeah. Paul, would you like to take this question? <laughs> no. He would like me uh, to take At the moment, we're working on in getting the final steps put in place so that we can have a Fedora built and Cisco shipped open H.264 codec. And there's lots of hardware now that is implementing in the hardware, like media engines, to decode all the codecs. And as long as all of that, everything it, that's patented is in the hardware, there's no reason we can't have the glue in Fedora that can you know, stream, you know, 
demux video and audio and send the, the video to you know the hardware to do the rendering and I think it it's going to be a less of a problem over time but but uh, patents are continuing to be a problem um, this is a government issue that we cannot fix we are bound by the law so if the long as the law is hostile to us so it sucks that's that has nothing to do with codex though right It doesn't. I mean, it simply works because they don't rev their kernel. <laughs> yes, but quickly, because this is a big... And it was really hard, and it was way more disastrous than you think it was. So just take my advice. Uh, we're really not in as bad a position as you think we might be. Where the, where the projects originate and where they're bound to by law, like we we are we have to comply with different sets of patents and and um, things and export law compared to um, something that's found in South Africa. I know, I know, but like I feel like it's it's a circular question. Like it, there's certain problems we can't solve because we're legally bound. Yes, he asked about the Nvidia driver. So. To answer your question, will we ever include the NVIDIA driver? No. But, but, <laughs> but, um, I believe there is work that is either planned or already done uh, where if a user were to go out and get the NVIDIA driver, for example, and install it on their system and somehow magically make it work, um, we will try not to break their system for them. Okay, so the problem with the NVIDIA driver, aside from it being proprietary and closed source, and everybody knows this, is that you install it, you finally get it working, you run DNF update, and you get a new kernel, and you reboot, and now you don't see anything on your screen. Or, you know, other bad things happen. Um, so I, I believe there was some work planned. I'm, I'm looking at Matthias, because he knows of this as well. I'm not sure it's done, but there is work planned. Yeah, so, so that if you do that... Um, and it gets working, and you update your kernel, it'll try really hard to not set the default kernel to the new one, and then you'll have to like manually go in and say, oh, there's a new kernel, I need to select that and figure it out. Now, it's not gonna fix it if it is broken, but at least it'll save you the trouble of like having to reboot seven times trying to figure out why your new kernel doesn't work when really it's your NVIDIA driver. So we're not gonna include it, but we're gonna make it slightly more user-friendly, so because, I mean, there are people who need faster drivers, and that's cool. I'm not going to weigh in on the, the morality of the issue, but we can do things to make it better for users who are stuck in that situation. We have another question. You're getting a workout today, man. <laughs> so, please, right? So, okay. Yes. Well, I didn't check, but can't you just include the DKMS? It will... So why uh, don't... Libgel? Yeah, where the, the applications connect to to get free GPU accelerator. But alternative system is, I mean, just copy the, what Debian did. The alternative system is still in Fedora. Fedora could have done like 10 years ago, but they didn't. Apart from yeah. we got into the technical details. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, DKMS, uh, AKMods, all that stuff is in Fedora, so you can use it. Um, but it doesn't work well. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Any other? I, w I would let you do that, but you got to be quick because we're like going down a rabbit hole here. <laughs> All right. Should we do a more general question? Because this is like. Yeah, this is a question that comes up every time we have this panel. But we, we had a slightly new like answer. Nobody yeah. last year's I mean, it took 10 years, but we're kind of starting to listen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question. Between that and infrastructure, we'll get it sooner or later. Five minutes. Yeah, right. Five minutes. Make it quick. What's the yeah. best possible question? There's one back there. All right, so Matt um, has the, the um, popularity of Fedora over time graph thing with a giant spike at the end of it. Um, 
have we mapped that to anything? Because like if you look at DistroWatch or anything, there's no massive spike in Fedora in recent. I'm saying, can you prove in any way that the stats you have are relevant? Like, yeah, you just had it. It was like, yeah. I believe that Linux Mint is the top of that graph because people are searching for other kinds of mint and you know, like for their <laughs> drinks and whatever. And there they go on the, that page. Um, so. We have some correlating evidence. I actually don't even have that slide in this deck anymore. Oh, um, about start and stuff like that. Yeah, so um, there, there's some other, other things that show, um, with the correlating evidence that shows that popularity is going up for these releases. Uh, there's a new feature uh, in Network Manager which hits a uh, file on our web server to help determine whether you're trapped behind a captive portal like at this university or not so that it can tell you that you need to log in to their terrible page and all the terrible things that that entails. Uh, and so that feature was added in Fedora 21 and the hits on that are going up at the same rate that the, that the adaptation on the update server of 21 and on are going up uh, pretty, pretty closely. So there's correlation there. Um, so I am confident that the line is definitely going up. I still have no idea what the axis means, but I'm confident in their, in their relative it's amount. A it's a happy graph. <laughs> also, and also start.fedoraproject.org, which is the page that people get by default as their initial install. Um, oh, sorry. So there's a start.fedoraproject.org page that Mozilla Firefox features uh, when you first install Fedora. Um, a lot of people, we believe, leave that on their leave that as a default. I mean, just because they just never get around to changing it, and it's not that big a deal anymore. And uh, you know, I know Langdon raised his hand. I do too. I, I don't think I've ever touched it. But um, but that number also is going up, and so that would also be a good indicator that there are more people picking up. So so that so like I said, there's there's several correlating factors here. Like we didn't look at this and go, great, we got the numbers we want. Don't look any further. <laughs> well, I did, but that's it. <laughs> but then you didn't. So that was. Important. All right. Do we have two minutes for one more? Anybody you got, got a better que question? Better Cash question than that. A better question. That was a good question. Well, so I, don't know. I sometimes browse the um, Fedora users list archives. Um, um, I know Matt answers a lot, and um, so does some of the members on this uh, stage. So, any comment on the tone and how um, the user happiness or unhappiness um, you observe? Uh, I would observe that e mailing lists are for old people, as I said before. Old uh, and, and yeah, and in fact, I think that uh, for a while we had a problem, and, and I'm, I'm an old people in this context, so I got to put that out there. Uh, uh, we've had, had a problem on the mailing list where the tone was really negative for a while, and that drove away all of the people who didn't want to deal with that. So the default tone on the mailing list is set at a grumpiness level that is higher than I would like it to be. Um, I hope that as we move to HyperKitty, uh, then we will have a sort of a new, uh, a new influx of people, and I intend to be very uh, aggressive. Aggressive? I'm not an aggressive person. Uh, aggressive. Enthusiastic. Enthusiastic about encouraging people who take a negative tone on the mailing list to not do so. Um, so that new people feel more welcome on the lists there, including enforcing our code of conduct. Well, as well as... Uh, uh, it would help if more people went to HyperKitty and used the HyperKitty features to vote things up. I was just going to say, too, other yeah. communication mechanisms as well. There's it a, says we're out of time. Is anybody stopping us, or we just keep... Yeah, is, is we're really so so, so there, are, there, are, there is still work to be done here, so we are getting there, though. <laughs> Do we hear me? Um. Did you just 
sticker, sticker, speaker, sticker.